I don't even know how to describe this week for you, the barrage of media and the acclaim that this film has gotten. And uh, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful movie. And you were so amazing. Are you now just starting to let it sink in what this all means? What an extraordinary opportunity this has been? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it was such a kind of common part of my life, you know, growing up. I, I don't remember really like not working on it you know it's as far back as I can remember I was kind of just doing this and every year I'd go work on boyhood and so I didn't really think I mean I thought about it very much but not in that sense not in like this grander kind of you know uh, big picture sense so it's it is it's 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 still it's still kind of still wrapping my head around what what exactly it means. I think it'll wrap I think it'll be wrapping your head around it for many years to come, you know, and things are, will hit you and you're going to be like, "Wow," you know, and and you know, it was you were 6 years old when when Richard found you and 7, I guess when you started actually doing the shoot. What do you think it was about you when you were back a wee 6-year-old that Richard saw in you and chose you to play Mason? Um, I mean, I or what has he told you now? <laughs> I think, I mean, I don't know. The, the, <laughs> the things he says make me a little uncomfortable. Um, I, <laughs> but, um, but if I, I, what I, I mean, I think he saw a like mind. You know, I think Richard and I view the world in kind of a similar way. And, um, you know, and think in a similar way. And I think, you know, I think that's what he recognized. So what blows me away is how on earth at that point in time did he convince your parents? If, if, a, if a director came to me and said, I want to cast your son, but I want to work with him for the for next 12, 12 years. years, I'd be like, are you a lunatic? Right. How did he convince your parents? I don't think they took much convincing. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're weird. They're weirdos and they're <laughs> artists themselves and they're also huge fans of Rick's work. Right. And, you know, I think they, they just, they got it. You know, the, the same reason he didn't, the same reason Patricia and Ethan you know, jumped in without mm -hmm. a script and, you know, this vague, like, 12 years, you know, they, they were both just like, yes, let's do it. And it's the same thing, you know, I think artists just kind of get it. They understand, you know, what he was trying to do. So what was the commitment like? I mean, did he call during the year or did he just say, okay, uh, be ready in June and we'll shoot? Like, what, right. just tell, kind of take us through how it kind of worked for you. I mean, I would, I would usually, st Rick and I both live in the same, in, in Austin, yeah. um, so I would see him, you know, once or twice between, you know, in the year between between filming usually and get lunch and kind of talk about things and it was never a set, a specific set date, you know, and it was it was constantly kind of changing, mostly based on Patricia and Ethan's schedules because they're, they're very, you know, they work a lot. Yes, they do, um, yeah. So, so a lot of it was kind of working around their, you know, their other projects. Um, so, I mean, a lot of times, you know, it would be like in, you know, a month, or, you know, two months or sometimes half a month, you know, mm -hmm. it'd be like, okay, we're going to shoot, we got, you know, they, they set the date and then we would just go do it and it would be, you know, Rick would come to us, like, he, he didn't, like I said, he didn't have a script at the beginning, um, he, but he had a very, you know, he had the architecture, he had the structure of the film and the story and who the characters were and the, and the tone, but he didn't have dialogue written, you mm -hmm. know, so he would kind of come to us with the outline of that year about a week before we started filming, um, for me, anyways, you know, it, it differed with Ethan and Patricia, but... And he would come to us with kind of an outline, sometimes a rough draft or a sample scene, and then we would just kind of workshop that and share our, share our own experiences and, you know, improvise some, some dialogue and kind of just use this workshop process to just put all of ourselves into it, and then Rick would take that information and... And use it. And, yeah, write yeah. a final draft. Yeah. yeah. And I would think, you know, as Mason is growing up before our very eyes or before, you know, Richard's <laughs> very eyes, yeah. you know, you're growing up, too. You're growing up. You're, you know, you've got a new family now as well, you know, yeah. as you're, every year you know you're going to see these people. And it's almost like having another mom and dad um, as you're growing, you, you know, your relationships yeah. are growing. Tell me about the bonding process, especially with Patricia. I mean, what she goes through in this film, not just the kids, what they go through, but my God, you know, my heart went out to her, uh, mm -hmm. what she endured and, and the bonding process between you and Patricia. It's incredible. I mean, she, Patricia is an incredible person. And, um, I, you know, film, working on those, on a lot of those scenes, and, and even more so watching them back has really 
just taught me a lot about my relationship with my own mother and it's you know definitely a reflection and you know it this is a world that my mom that my actual mom can't really be you know be a part of and be there for me you know in in this world and so this you know the world of whatever the entertainment industry yeah, and so yeah. It, and Patricia's a very maternal person, so yeah. it's good to have her on my side. Did uh, working on this affect you in any way in your family? I don't think so. I mean, it you know it was really fairly uninvasive, as yeah. you know, as as big of a part of my life as it was kind of emotionally. It you know it was two weeks out of the year. It never really affected me that much that I can tell. I guess it's kind of like going to summer camp in a bit, in a way, or yeah. something like that. You it know, it was yeah. It was just this really incredible summer camp, you know, and a family reunion, kind of, and just, it just kind of a, a life project to go work on. And what was the rest of the year like for you? Were you just normal? You'd go to school? And I was homeschooled, yeah. so, um, you know, I, I traveled a lot and uh, made a lot of art but, and went to a lot of other summer camps also, you know, I did a lot of theater and yeah. different kinds of art and then it's funny because you know I'm watching this movie and as you're growing up in front of you know our eyes and I'm thinking wow uh, you know Richard is one of the most amazing filmmakers I, I love every single one of his films and he's so great but boy did he ever look out with you because my god how do you know when a kid is six years old when he turns 10 11 that he's not gonna or whatever he's gonna be a huge brat or a drug addict or god knows what you know right. really like how do you how do you keep yourself in check and and make sure that you grew up to the great kid that you've grown up to be? I don't know. I I didn't. I mean, I I think everybody wants to be the best person they can, um, and I think you know having this this project, it, you know, it I think it was a really valuable outlet to have as a teenager. You know, everybody you have very intense, very new emotions as a teenager and. And I think everybody needs, you know, help to kind of understand and explore those emotions. And it's really, you know, it's difficult. It's very yeah. difficult to, to understand. And having, even if I, I wasn't necessarily consciously aware of it as of being a therapeutic experience, you know, as a child, you know, a teenager or a child or anything. Mm -hmm. But but I think growing up having that, having this this fiction, you know, this character that I was helping to to create and kind of constantly comparing to my own experience and using my emotional experience and journey and you know difficulty and pain to inform what this character was going through and kind mm -hmm. of take those emotions and put them outside of myself a little bit and kind of look at them and explore them and figure out where they originate and how I express these things that's you know that's a huge part of it too is kind of identifying these emotions that you know, that Mason may be feeling in these situations and then kind of figuring out how I express those emotions. And so, I don't know exactly where yeah. I was going with that, yeah, but, but, I think, no, it, but I think that, you know, that helped me not become a drug addict or, or whatever, you know. Just go down the wrong path. Just go down, down yeah. the wrong path. You know, yeah. it caused me to constantly be exploring myself. And I think, you know, that's why people go down dark paths is because they're afraid of themselves and they don't know how to explore their emotions. Yeah. And, you know, I was constantly exploring. I'm sure. Emotions. What an amazing opportunity. Like, seriously, who needs school when you had this? Honest to God. Like, yeah. really, you know? Um, so watching it back, and I know that you didn't really get to see it until it was all done. Is that correct? Like, yeah. yeah. And now you've seen it a few times. What scenes, what, or, you know, when you're looking at it and watching it back, what, what gets you the most and emotionally or what just really, you know, You know, it's, you? it's kind of all of it. it, it I, I rarely cry during the film. But I almost always cry when the credits roll, and it's that's it's kind of that it's that accumulation, you know. It's it's all of it together. I think is really what what hits me is just kind of seeing all of these little moments that that might seem like meaningless or embarrassing or stupid or something I wouldn't want to look at on its own, or that certainly you know experiencing it as a teenager you feel awkward and you feel like an incomplete yeah. person, but seeing it all together and in context is just. I don't know. It's very intense. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's an amazing, amazing film. I mean, I, I would be shocked if we don't see this at the Oscars next year. It's just what Richard did. I don't I don't know if any, any filmmaker could ever do something like that again. I don't know. It just was so... I hope did it can. feel special, like, while you were doing it? Or do you just kind of get it at the end and going how special it is? I mean... I mean, it, it, it kind of, it was just kind of my life. So it, it was normal to me. Right. 
but so I don't know if I thought of it necessarily in that way, like oh, this is special or crazy, yeah. but but it was very special to me. Yeah. You know, I, I, it was something I cared about very much. I think. And working with Ethan, I mean, there's um, there's so many great scenes with him too. And in the beginning, we you know we don't really like him right because of the animosity between the parents. But then you know, of course, we do. We grow to love him because yeah. he's just you he's see just how, a guy. He's and he's a good dad. He's he a good dad. He does love his kids. It's just circumstances that millions of people can relate to in this world, yeah. you know, and there's a great scene in the car where he makes you this mixed CD, and I know for a fact that he did the same for his own for his daughter. Own kids, did yeah. he, did you end up keeping that CD? And <laughs> Not that one. I don't think it was real, the one in, in the movie, but but they have made a little promotional item. Oh, have they? <laughs> with the, that another interviewer just told me is apparently a different song list. Oh, like okay. Like, he paused it and looked at the, at the list. There's, like, one <laughs> shot, and apparently it's different, so I don't know what yeah. that means, but... Um, what was it like working but with I him? But I do have a copy of it, and I've been listening to the Black Album. Yeah, go well, Beatles, I mean... It's, it's great. I yeah. mean, it's, it's true what he says. Yeah. Like, having them organized... It works, you know, it creates that balance. What is it with Ethan? He doesn't age. He really doesn't age. I know, he just gets better looking. <laughs> it's crazy. But working with him must have been an awesome experience, too, especially for the fact, well, even with, even Patricia, too. I mean, they are real parents, and so, uh, but having those one on one times, like the, the scene when you guys went camping, and to me, it just felt so real and natural. Did it feel and like that just, doing it? Yeah, and they're so, they're so excited and so genuine, and we're just so happy to be working on the project, and we're just throwing themselves into it in such a vulnerable way that, I mean, they're both incredible actors, but most films don't ask for that. They don't ask for that vulnerability. And to just be around these adults, these very accomplished adults, just kind of expressing themselves in such a tender way, I think, was, I mean, it's incredible. Are these relationships now that you're going to have for the rest of your life? I hope so. Yeah. I could imagine. I, I just couldn't imagine saying goodbye. What was the last, 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 last day of shooting like? I mean, it was so. It was very. It was bittersweet. You know, I think it snuck up on all of us. I mean, the last moment in the film was the last moment that we shot, and the, I don't know. There were a lot of tears shed. I think Rick and I hugged for about ten minutes, yeah. and it just. I don't know. You just. We don't even know what to think. Yeah. You know. That's. It's just like you. I don't. There aren't words. I don't know what to even think about it because it's just so, just such a tender kind of part of my life and something that I didn't think about in this in this external way for so many years and yeah. then suddenly it's done and suddenly people are seeing it and it's, all of this is happening and it's just... I don't know, it's so the next movie is adulthood. Now we have to follow right, you for yeah. the next 12 years Manhood. and see you get married and have kids, you know, think about right. stuff like that, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? So, so now, what's happening with you? Like, are you moving on to? Are you getting projects? Are you getting scripts? Like, what's happening now? Yeah, I'm You're starting. Like, I'm starting to see scripts. Um, I'm kind of biding my time right now. You know, this is the last little run of press that I'm doing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I want to. I'm. I want to go to school. Really, I good. really want to go to school. But I also, you know, working on working on it, on on. on any kind of art project is a blast. Yeah. And, you know, acting can definitely be an outlet to that. So, what do you want to take at school? Um, I mean, definitely psychology and visual art. I think. I mean, also filmmaking and acting. But, but I'm really, I've been pretty obsessed with painting and drawing for quite a while. So. Good for you. Well, like I say, you did an extraordinary job in this movie. I mean, kudos to you to to do this from when you were seven till eighteen. I just it just completely blows my mind that you uh, did this project. I just think it's uh, spectacular. I just hope so many people see this movie because it really, I don't think there's been one negative thing said about this film across North America. Yeah, I mean, are you, you know, kind of pinching yourself at the reaction to it? And, and kudos to Rick. I mean, right. my God. I, I can't even imagine what he went through in the editing process with this. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, he, is, he is an incredible artist. Yeah. He really is. But you know, I, but I am I I, it, I kind of like negative reactions now, just because it's been so overwhelmingly positive that it's like. Okay, it's, you suck. You yeah, suck. I know. Really, Thank you, you suck. Okay, like, I, I'm just. You know. <laughs> <laughs> really, you couldn't get it together, like stupid and ugly. Yeah. And awkward yeah. And what was with like some of the haircuts you had in there? Really. Honestly, I, was, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I 
<laughs> no, sir, I can't fault you on anything. You did a spectacular <laughs> job, and I just want to congratulate you. And, you know, start thinking about what tux you might want to pick out for the Oscars in uh, right. February, because, you know, you might be wearing one there, you know? So. Yeah, I'll have to pick your dead one. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's great and, to talk uh, to you. lovely to talk to you. Thank you.